Welcome to the Old Time Radio Superman Show. This is your host, Adam Graham, coming to you from Boise, Idaho. We're going to get into today's action-packed, exciting episode of Superman in just a moment. Um, when last we left, uh, uh, Hoffman and Huling were plotting that it might make sense to get off the train in Carson City. Um, while Clark Kent at last worked out a convenient way to be able to get away to be able to go out and stop the train. Well, we're going to find out what's going to happen in Part 9 of The Dragon's Teeth in just a moment. Uh, but I do want to share a comment I got from Podcast Alley. And this one comes from Cliff. Hi, Adam. Really appreciate your podcasting of the Superman radio show. Well, thanks very much. And I encourage everyone to please leave their comments on Podcast Alley. Check it out, podcastalley.com. Um, also, visit our store late at uh, Laser and Sword Magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us, uh, to enjoy the latest in serial fiction. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and we will get started with... Uh, with The Dragon's Teeth, Part 9. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look at the sky! Look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men, and who fights a never-ending battle against crime and injustice disguised as Clark Kent. Mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. When we last saw Kent, he had assumed the familiar costume of Superman. And Red Cloak, flying in the night wind, was speeding to the rescue of Lois Lane, star girl reporter, an unwilling passenger on a streamlined express bound for San Francisco. Walter Huffman, a dishonest dealer in jewels, and Hu Ling, his Chinese henchman, watch her constantly from an adjacent drawing room. But even as Superman spans the miles like some giant bird... The suspicion that all is not right creeps into Huffman's mind. As the train roars into the night, he and Hooling talk softly. Listen. Hooling. Yes, Huffman. I have been thinking, Hooling. Thinking about that telegram Miss Lane tried to send. It is said many men have been hanged because of a woman's cleverness. Beware, Huffman. Yes, we are too close to our goal to let it slip through our fingers now. You realize what it means, Huling? Once we have in our possession the ten Chinese herbs described by the dragon's teeth, we will own you and I a medicine that will cure all disease. But in the meantime, what about the girl? I think it's best not to take any chances. If that telegram she tried to send had gotten through, the police would have been waiting for us in San Francisco with open arms the moment this train pulled in. For all I know, that reporter Kent may have given the police orders to watch all trains. Then what do you suggest? The next stop is a place called Carson City. We arrive there in ten minutes. You will get off with Miss Lane, hire or buy a car, and proceed the rest of the way by automobile. <laughs> a very clever idea, Huffman. <laughs> very clever. See that our bags are packed and ready to go. I will take care of Miss Lane. Work quickly. There is no time to waste. Meanwhile, high above the dark countryside, the figure leaps forward in curious flight, following the thin ribbons of steel that wind in and out of mountainous ravines and over towering trestles. Faster and ever faster, mocking even the wind in his flight. I hope this isn't a wild goose chase. No, I'm certain it isn't. Lois never sent that fire ordering me back east. It was a fake. I should be sighting that train soon. It's somewhere here in the mountains, this side of Carson City. I'm almost sure Lois is on it. And if she is, that means Huffman is there, too. And Hu Ling. All I want with those two is 60 seconds. What was that? Sounded like a train whistle. Yes, it is. And I can see the train down below. Those flickering lights up ahead must be Carson City. Makes a stop there. I wonder whether I'd better wait until it pulls out of the station before boarding it as Clark Kent. And I'll just drop down a little closer and take a look. It's the Pacific Flyer, all right. 
The only train they could be on. I suppose I could get aboard now as well as any other time. Down! Down! Oh, just caught myself in time. There's a brakeman swinging a red lantern on the observation platform. Lucky thing he didn't see me. Well, now I'll have to wait until she pulls out of the station. Maybe it's best. She's slowing up. There. She's in the station. I'll drop down and hide behind the observation car until she starts rolling again. Down! Down! Yeah, that does it. Yeah, I'm well hidden here. And the moment the train starts, I'll swing aboard. Uh, Lois will certainly be surprised to see me. Not to mention Walter Huffman. Uh, the train's starting. Brakeman's probably left the observation platform by now. Yes, he has. Here we go, on board. Up! We did a wise thing leaving that train at Carson City. Certainly no harm was done. Well, it won't help you, Huffman. Nothing will help you. Sooner or later, men like you and that and that Chinaman in the back seat get what's coming to them. You must not lose control of your temper, Miss Lane. The sun is hot and we have a long trip across the open plains. Three hundred miles. Conserve your energy. It is said that anger is poison to the blood. Oh, if you don't stop telling me what's said, I'll... Oh, what's the use? There's no sense trying to talk to either of you. You're not human beings, you're beasts. Those are very unkind words, Miss Lane. Have we not treated you with the utmost courtesy? Of course you have, telling everyone I was crazy. Well, that, unfortunately, was unavoidable. You will admit it to us all fair that it was a uh, clever move? Not clever, Huffman. Diabolical. You've got the mind of a devil, Huffman. You are very complimentary, Miss Lane. I, I do not deserve it. You deserve everything that's coming to you, and more. And you'll get it. Perhaps. Better close that window, Miss Lane. The dust is flowing in. You were warned about that. Remember, the man you bought the car from said there might be a dust storm. You're not worried, are you? No. Not the least bit. Good. I admire women who have courage. Yeah. It does seem to be blowing up. Keep your eyes open for road markers. We don't want to lose our way. Oh, this is your little party, Huffman. Keep your own eyes open. My name is Clark Kent. See these credentials? This press card. I'm a newspaper man with a daily planner. I'm sorry, sir, but we ain't allowed to give out no information about passengers. But this young lady was a personal friend of mine. That don't make no difference, sir. Huh. Now, does this make any difference? A ten dollar bill. Yes, sir. All right, now tell me what I want to know. Was the young lady answering the description I gave you on board this train? Yes, yeah, sir. She's she the one who got bats in the belfry. What? She, she kind of crazy. Who told you that? The gentleman traveling with her. He, he said I wasn't to pay no mind if she come out with something queer. Oh, this gentleman who was traveling with her porter, did he have an accent? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh-huh. And was there a Chinaman with him? Sure enough. Where are they now? On this train? No, no, sir. They, they, they don't got off at Carson City. With the young lady? Yes, yeah, sir. I've got to go after them. Yeah, but we don't make no stop till we get to Pine Valley. That's a good two-hour run. Yes. Yes, I, I know. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot, Porter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. You're, you're sure not welcome. Pine Valley. Every second counts now. If it is, I may not be able to pick up their trail. Oh, why didn't I board the train before it reached Carson City? Well, no sense crying over spilled milk. Got to get off this train the same way I got on, through the observation platform. Here we are. Good thing it's empty. Yeah. Nobody's watching me. Now I can drop Clark Kent. For Superman. You slipped through this time, Huffman. But it won't be for long. Up! Up! And away! This storm is getting pretty bad. A 
far back did we get off the road, Miss Lane? Well, I don't know. I told you this was your little party. You go ahead and run it. Yeah, I can't see with the dust blowing against the windshield. I have to go out and look around. You will you will need some assistance, Hoffman. No, Ling, stay where you are. I will be right back. Only a fool who thinks he's clever would have started out in the face of warnings. It's not for you to criticize. I know, I know. It is said that only a critic can criticize. You had better hold your tongue, young lady. I can't find the road. The dust is blinding. Yeah. Now, Mr. Smart Alec, what's the next? Keep quiet, Miss Lynn. I'm in no humor for choking. Well, what do we do? Sit here and let the dust bury us alive? We keep going as long as we can. Across the plain. If you listen to that man back in Carson City, you ah, have... Why must we be subjected to a half man? Must she continue with us? No. You wouldn't dare. Who can tell? Well, maybe it'd be better if we turned back. Back you... there. We have lost our sense of direction. There's nothing but dust, dust, and more dust than that wind. Hey, how much longer do we keep going this way? For all you know, we're moving in circles. I told you to keep quiet. First, wait a minute. What happened? The car stalled. We are carrying too big a load. But... What does that mean? It means we cannot continue carrying so big a load. Do as I suggested, Hoffman. Oh, oh no. No. I am sorry, Miss Lane. There is no other way. Oh, no. Oh, you can't leave me here in the storm. I'll, I'll suffocate. The, the dust. There is no I... choice. The car must be light. But, but I'm not very heavy. I... It is not you alone. Cooling must remain behind, too. You do not mean that, Hoffman? I mean it. With only one in the car, there may be a chance. It's not human. Oh, please. Please don't leave us behind, Hoffman. I have helped you get the jail, Hoffman. It is because of Hu Ling that you have the dragon's teeth. I know, Hu Ling, but there's nothing else to do. No, you cannot do this. Put down that knife, Hu Ling. I have a gun. If one must live, it will be Hu Ling. You struck him on the head. It was my life or his. I'd carry him out and leave him here with you. You'll be all right, shortly. Step from the car, Miss Lane. Oh, no. No, please. Step from the car. Hoffman. Goodbye, Miss Lane. And good luck. Oh, no. No! No, come back! Come back! Come back! Come back! Lost in the blinding horror of a dust storm, Lois, panic-stricken, watches the car vanish into the night. Alone, with only the unconscious hooling crumpled at her feet. Can Superman find her on the endless prairie? Don't forget to tune in next time for another thrill-packed episode with Superman. Tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky. Look. It's a plane. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Welcome back. You know, I, I've got to say this for Hoffman. He really did sound like he was sincerely sorry to have to leave Lois in the uh, in the dust storm. I've never uh, seen a villain so apologetic in my life. It's like, you know, I'm really sorry, Miss Lane. I did just nothing else that can be done. Though I, I really don't get the logic of this, um, that uh, he's going to somehow get through this storm with lightning the car. That's, I don't know. I somehow miss the logic of how he, this is actually going to work in some sort of physical sense. Um, but we are headed for an exciting conclusion next Sunday. Um, we're not going to do a special on the 4th of July. That's one, we, On several holidays like New Year's Day, Memorial Day, yeah, we go ahead and do a special, but uh, not the 4th of July because that's, that's also my anniversary. So we'll be back on the 5th of July with the next exciting installment of uh, Superman, and we're going to wrap this all up. And on a uh, week from now, we're going to get into a brand new series, so I can hardly wait. For now, though, uh, from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.